Okay, so let's dive into one of the wildest cosmic stories happening right now. The James Webb Telescope just found something at the dawn of time that has scientists completely baffled. We're talking about the ancient galaxy GNZ 11, where it looks like a monstrous black hole is growing at a rate that seriously challenges our understanding of the universe. This isn't just a new record, it's a discovery that's forcing scientists to rethink the first chapter of cosmic history. So, how could this cosmic monster have gotten so big, so fast? What Webb has uncovered in the faint ancient light of GNZ 11 could shake up everything we thought we knew. Let's get into it. To really get what's going on here, we need to go way back. Not just a little, but to the very edge of cosmic history, to a galaxy named GNZ 11. Before this, GNZ 11 was already famous. Hubble spotted it back in 2015, and it was the oldest, most distant galaxy we'd ever seen. The light from this place has traveled for over 13.4 billion years to get to us. Think about that for a moment. The universe is 13.8 billion years old. So seeing GNZ 11 is like looking at a picture of a 100-year-old person taken when they were just three. It's a peek into the cosmic nursery right as the first stars were blinking on. But here's the thing that always bugged astronomers. GNZ 11 was way too bright. Our model said a galaxy that young shouldn't be so luminous. So what was powering it? A massive burst of star formation? Or was something else, something way more powerful, hiding at its center? The only detective that could crack this case was the James Webb Space Telescope. And when it pointed its powerful eyes at GNZ 11, the answer it found was a real shocker. Here's where things get wild. At the heart of GNZ 11, Webb found the culprit, a supermassive black hole. And we're not just talking about any black hole. Webb's data show this thing has a mass of about 2 million times our sun. Now, while that's smaller than the black hole in our own Milky Way, finding a black hole this massive, this early in the universe is a huge problem. It's like finding a fully grown oak tree in a garden that was only planted a few weeks ago. According to everything we know, black holes need a ton of time to grow. They start from what we call seeds, usually the collapsed cores of massive stars. Then, over billions of years, they chow down on gas, dust, and other stars to get bigger. It's supposed to be a slow and steady process. To get to 2 million suns in just 400 million years after the Big Bang is incredibly hard to explain. It would need to be eating at a shocking, almost unbelievable rate from the moment it was born. This discovery put astrophysicists in a really tight spot. How do you form a giant so quickly? It was clear this black hole wasn't just big for its age, it was pushing the boundaries of what our models thought was possible, suggesting that something in the early universe allowed for a growth spurt of cosmic proportions. In astrophysics, there's kind of a cosmic speed limit on how fast a black hole can grow. It's called the Eddington limit. The idea is pretty simple. It's all about balance. As a black hole's gravity pulls matter in, that matter gets super hot and forms a glowing disk that shines with incredible intensity. That light creates an outward pressure that pushes back against the stuff falling in. Think of it like trying to pour sand into a powerful fan. Gravity is the sand pouring down, but the fan is the radiation pushing back up. The Eddington limit is that perfect balance point where the black hole is feeding at its maximum steady rate. If it tries to eat any faster, the radiation pressure should blow away its own food supply. For decades, we thought this was a hard and fast rule. And then Webb looked at GNZ 11. The data was stunning. Scientists calculated the black hole's feeding rate, and it was found to be accreting matter at an exceptionally high rate. This phenomenon, known as Super Eddington accretion, was once just a theory, but here was a sign that it might actually be happening in the infant universe. The fan wasn't just failing to blow the sand away, the sand was pouring through with incredible force. This was the crucial clue. 
it wasn't just growing fast, it was growing at a rate that pushes physics to its absolute limits. Now, making a claim like that requires some serious evidence, and this is where Webb's power is just mind-blowing. It didn't just see a bright spot, it did a full forensic analysis. First, Webb's main camera, NearCam, saw that the light from GNZ11 had two parts, the spread-out glow of the galaxy stars and a brilliant, sharp point of light right at the center. The colors of that central point weren't from stars, they were a perfect match for a scorching hot accretion disk around a black hole. That was clue number one. But the real smoking gun came from NearSpec, which breaks light down into its chemical signatures. The analysis found three key things. First, incredibly dense gas packed into the galaxy's core, which you find right next to a feasting black hole. Second, they saw the chemical fingerprints of ionized elements, atoms stripped of their electrons by intense radiation, another trademark of an active black hole. The third and most dynamic piece of evidence was a powerful wind getting blasted out of the galaxy's core at incredible speeds. These kinds of outflows are a known consequence of a black hole that's eating furiously. Together, these three pieces of evidence, the dense gas, the ionized elements, and the powerful wind were an undeniable fingerprint. Webb proved not only that the black hole was there, but that it was the most distant, active supermassive black hole we've ever found. The possibility that GNZ11's black hole is undergoing super Eddington accretion could solve one of the biggest puzzles in cosmology. How did billion solar mass quasars get so big so fast in the early universe? This discovery in GNZ11 suggests that for short, crazy periods, the cosmic rules can be bent. So how does it work? How can a black hole get around the Eddington limit? Well, current theories suggest it's all about how it gets its food. The classic limit assumes a nice, even flow of gas. But in the chaos of early galaxies, matter might fall in as dense, messy clumps. Think of it like shielding. These dense clumps can punch right through the radiation wind that would stop a smoother flow. There's also something called the photon trapping effect, where if matter falls in fast enough, the radiation it emits gets dragged into the black hole with it before it can escape and push back. These super Eddington phases were likely short but incredibly intense, a furious feast followed by a period of calm after the black hole's own winds blow away the leftovers. GNZ11 might be a snapshot of one of these episodes, a key piece of the puzzle. Now, this whole thing feeds into a huge debate. Where do supermassive black holes even come from? We're talking about two main theories, light seeds and heavy seeds. The light seed idea says the first black holes came from the universe's first stars, leaving behind black holes maybe a hundred to a thousand times the mass of our sun. To become the monster in GNZ11, these seeds would have had to grow almost non-stop at or even above the Eddington limit. Before Webb, that seemed pretty unlikely, but seeing what's happening in GNZ11 makes this path seem way more plausible. The heavy seed theory is different. It suggests that giant clouds of gas in the early universe could have collapsed directly into a black hole of 10,000 solar masses, giving it a huge head start. These heavy seeds could grow at a much more relaxed pace and still get huge in time. So where does GNZ11 fit in? The real question is, are we seeing a light seed caught in a massive growth spurt or a heavy seed that's also feasting? The jury's still out, but what this discovery does is give us a real target. Our models now have to be able to create this exact scenario. As Webb finds more of these ancient black holes, we can start to piece together the family album of the universe's first giants. But wait, there's a twist. As if rewriting the book on black holes wasn't enough, Webb found a secret in GNZ11's halo. A team of astronomers found a clump of helium gas around the galaxy. What was amazing was what they didn't find, any elements heavier than helium, which astronomers just call metals. This is huge. Every element heavier than hydrogen and helium was cooked up inside of stars. Finding a pocket of gas without any of them means we are looking at pure, primordial material left over from the Big Bang. This pristine gas is the perfect nursery for a type of star we've only ever theorized about. 
Population 3 stars. These are the mythical first stars of the universe. Made just of hydrogen and helium, they would have been hundreds of times more massive than our sun, incredibly bright, and lived for only a couple of million years before exploding. Finding direct proof of them is a holy grail of astrophysics. While Webb hasn't seen the stars themselves, finding their potential birthplace is the closest we've ever come. It's another layer to the story. GNZ11 might be hosting a rule-bending black hole at its center while nurturing the universe's very first stars on its edges. These discoveries paint a picture of a dynamic and rapidly changing early universe. The combination of a hyperactive black hole and the potential for these massive Population 3 stars would have completely transformed the galaxy. The intense energy blasting from the central black hole could have triggered massive bursts of star formation in some areas while blowing away the gas needed for it in others. This kind of self-regulation is key to how galaxies evolve, and GMZ11 shows it was happening with incredible intensity right from the start. At the same time, the light from Population 3 stars would have helped drive one of the most important events in cosmic history, the Epoch of Reionization, which is when the universe became transparent to light. GNZ11 is like a laboratory where at the same time, the light from Population 3 stars would have helped drive one of the most important events in cosmic history, the Epoch of Reionization, which is when the universe became transparent to light. GN and Z11 is like a laboratory where we can see all these incredible processes in action, linking the dark early universe to the one we see today. These discoveries are fundamentally changing our place in the universe. If this journey to the cosmic dawn has you as excited as I am, make sure to subscribe for more deep dives into space. What do you guys think is more fascinating, the physics challenging black hole or the hunt for the very first stars? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Hitting that like button really helps bring these stories to more people. Webb's look at GNZ11 has done more than just set a new distance record. It's handed us a cosmic puzzle that's forcing a major scientific rethink. We've found a black hole that seems too big too soon, growing at a rate that challenges what we thought was possible. This single observation gives us the best evidence yet that the first supermassive black holes could have grown in these incredibly violent Super Eddington Dursts. At the same time, we found the potential cradle of the universe's legendary first stars. GNZ11 is a Rosetta Stone for the early universe holding keys to how the first cosmic monsters and the first starlight were born. What was once just a bright dot to Hubble is now, through Webb's eyes, a chaotic and revolutionary landscape. It's an amazing reminder that every time we look deeper, the universe is waiting with new surprises that challenge us to our core. The first chapter of cosmic history is being rewritten, and we're lucky enough to be reading it.